Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Hashtag Sea Arthritis here at the 2020 Canadian Rheumatology Association and Arthritis Health Professions Association annual scientific meeting. That is a mouthful. You guys got to shorten it up somehow if you can make that happen. Um, we're really pleased to have uh, you back. It's Cheryl Cohen. I'm a person living with rheumatoid arthritis. I also am blessed to lead arthritis consumer experts. And we host this event, of course, with the Canadian Spondylitis Association and the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board of Arthritis Research Canada. It gives me great, if this looks like double your pleasure, double your fun, it is. Um, these are the very famous uh, doctors, um, Kam and Nima Shojanya. Uh, they are both rheumatologists practicing here in our beautiful province of British Columbia. And I thank you very much, docs, for joining me. I know that I tore you out of the poster session. Um, but hopefully we'll, we'll uh, have a, a quick, some words of wisdom from you, and then you can go back to the learning process. But, so welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I guess I'm going to start with you, Con, because you're on my immediate left. I'm older. And you're older, uh, yeah. Much. Um, <laughs> much, he says. Oh, I tell you, the fun song at the beginning. Um, so Dr. Shurjanya, may I call you Con? Yes. May I call you Nima? Yes. I call you Nima. <laughs> no, okay, kidding. Um, so you both really focus on um, practice of rheumatology. You both have fairly robust clinical practices. You also do many other things for your own rheumatology community. I know Com, you run the training program. You run. You're the head of the division of rheumatology at UBC. You're the head of St. Paul's Hospital, VGH, UBC. He's also the king of the world. Um, <laughs> Dr. But, Jamal is the program director now. Oh, is the yeah. program director yeah. now. So Dr. Shaheen Jamal is yes. now the program director. Good of you to give up some of that power, Kong. <laughs> 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 we know each other for a long time, and he suffers my silly humor. Um, uh, but in all seriousness, we're really thrilled you're here. And I think what we really want to know, our audience on Facebook and Twitter Live want to know, is um, you've been in practice a while. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of patients. You've been seeing following inflammatory arthritis patients and, and many others in SARDs and whatnot for years now. What have you seen change in terms of patient care and how you actually teach doctors, rheumatologists like yourselves to care for those patients? What have you seen sort of tracking together patient rheumatology and the changes? I think the traditional model of teaching lectures, uh, small group teaching is, is really changing. We use... Um, our patients help us teach, we, our nurses help us teach, we have um, uh, different models of teaching using uh, electronic resources, yeah. um, the traditional apprenticeship model we use still too. So, but I think the biggest thing is our trainees are just so good now. Oh. They, we, they're chosen. Unlike you when a, you were training, well, right? They, you, when we were training, they chose you for your marks uh, only, and uh, and now they train people for marks, but also for um, their collaboration, their nice. their communication. They choose them from a variety of backgrounds now. So I think the quality of the new doctors is. Uh, just so good. So that resonates in me. I mean, when you look at sort of modernity in medicine, I think being human and applying your skill set in a very human, communicative way is, I think, what patients are looking mm -hmm. for, frankly. They mm -hmm. kind of want to know, um, I think, better from their rheumatologists, not just, you know, will these medicines work and will they be safe and effective? They want to talk to you mm -hmm. probably about many, many other things. And I know that time constraints probably limit some of that conversation, but that's why now your practices have nurses and mm -hmm. other arthritis health professionals involved in, in the delivery of care. And I know you've been, he's being very modest to people, he's, you've been a groundbreaker in terms of how those models look today. Um, I know in British Columbia and, and you've shared that work across the country, so good for you. Look at him, he's yeah. gonna blush. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Nima, you practice in the interior of the province in West Kelowna. Uh, followed, fo followed in brother's footsteps, That's true. Uh, and, and of course far exceeded him now in, <laughs> in clinical practice. Um, and I know that you're doing a lot of work in what they call in this province in our care delivery system in arthritis, the travel and consultation service, so rural remote yes. care, telemedicine. Describe some. Describe your days when you yeah. go do that. So yeah, I've been going to Fort St. John and Dawson Creek for uh, since 2002, Dr. Patterson. Uh, introduced me and then she said it's the most rewarding part of her practice wow. because uh, she, you know, people with really sick really needed help couldn't travel 
and you know much uh, much more so than uh, in a in a big city. There's you're seeing a lot of more minor minor conditions or non-inflammatory conditions. Right. So, so the need is there. Yeah. And so uh, it ends up being six trips a year. Go for a week at a time. And that's very busy, starting at 7 in the morning, working to 10 in the evening oh. every day. One small break to have a glass of water, that's about it. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, uh, it's grueling, but it is. He's it walking is around so... with a ring, an Ivy Ringer's pole. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I have to cinch up my belt a few, uh, a few notches at the end of the day, yeah. actually. But uh, no, it's. it's, uh, it's uh, and then uh, we see a lot of people there, but also using uh, telehealth. Uh, so the referrals all get sent to my office for triage purposes. Some of them you do an initial assessment via telehealth and then you can uh, make some recommendations and then see the patient promptly in uh, maybe not as long a visit. You do the main visit of taking all the data okay. uh, via telehealth. That and is, and when you say helpful. that, Mima, when you say telehealth, that's those are consultations with the patient themselves? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so we set them and, up. And the satisfaction them. level is still high. I guess I guess what their pressing need is to be heard and seen, exactly. even if it's through a digital device. Yeah, and then they still, most of them will get seen physically okay. and follow up. Some are clearly uh, non-inflammatory, where you just make recommendations on physiotherapy, lifestyle changes, maybe pain medications or other interventions. Yeah. But for the inflammatory patients, you can say, you, you, we recommend you start this medicine or that medicine, or these tests should be done, send the requisitions down. So everything is set up for their first physical examination or okay. first rheumatologic physical examination. Okay, so I'm gonna turn back to you, um, Calm, and, and we had someone here in the booth um, on day one and um, Marie Comets Baker, and she's very involved in the CBME uh, work that's been going on, which is the sort of the Royal College mm -hmm. saying, we want to do something different here. And it's sort of this way of kind of, um, as I would describe it in lay terms, sort of continual uh, quality improvement in practice mm -hmm. and sort of shadowing and coaching and training. Are, is that something that you guys are starting to to do now, and if so, is it going well? Uh, we just started this year, well, in 2019 we started. Yeah. We uh, changed our program. Yeah. Dr. Shaheen Jamal uh, put so much work into changing around our program. Yeah. It's a competency-based model, so the resident needs to attain a certain competency in, for example, the core knowledge right. before they are Tick that they tick that off, and they could move on to more advanced okay. steps. So it may take a little longer for someone, or they may be faster, and then they can move on to the next step. So it's a uh, very individualized. And uh, I was very proud of the faculty that uh, embraced it. They yeah. Said they, uh, yeah, because sometimes it's hard to change yeah. sort of what you've been yeah. doing for a long time. Yeah. It's called competency competency by design, right? Yeah, or competency based medical education. Yeah, you can use them both. Yeah, fantastic, and. You know, I always find, I'm old enough to be able to say this, I always find that through educational processes over time, you learn stuff too, uh, stuff you thought you did know, but then you can, oh, well, that's kind of cool. So what for you as a practitioner have you seen in this model change? Like what have you kind of gone, oh, okay, I could do that better, or I could do that a little differently? I've noticed that the residents are taking more charge of their own education, so they, oh. if they don't know something, they will try to do that more and be evaluated on it. Okay, cool. So. And you? Do you want that to happen to you? Be evaluated more on it? Or do you don't have to, you that know, doesn't happen me, to you. Well, I guess I your like evaluation to, are the smiles on your patient's well, faces well, we're when doing they a, leave. We're doing a program where we just published a program where we, the problem with doctors like us is that you can evaluate surgeons and radiologists and pathologists and you can quality check them, yeah. but you can't quality check someone working in the office like us. So we developed a process where we videotape the doctor over the patient's shoulder, so you don't see the patient's yeah. face. And um, in, and quality check, we can see ourselves, we see the video, our colleagues see the video and comment on how well we were doing. Oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. This is brilliant. And so you're kind of critiquing each other's yeah. performance, by basically, our, by, our by your peers. Trust. And, and how do you guys feel about that? Is it or did, did your peers welcome that approach? Well, we did it with uh, five of us already. And okay. We'd like to expand it to involve everyone else. Okay, and how are they eager? Or do they know about it They yet? don't know about it yet. They do now. <laughs> <laughs> they do now. That's terrific. Um, you know, when I think about sort of your time here at your annual meeting, 
I know it's a great time for collaboration and coming up with new collaborations. When you think uh, about the last sort of three days now, um, what have been the highlights for you in the poster sessions, in the plenary presentations? What for you have been the highlights? Uh, I think there was a lot on scleroderma and interstitial mm -hmm. lung disease. We had like four different presentations on just the different approaches and, uh, and a lot of changed in med medications for various types of inter interstitial fibrosis. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it's a very So not, not typically spoken of and that often, that frequency at a meeting. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That seemed to be quite a focus this meeting. Is that because... There's more of it? There's uh, more treatments coming more out. More treatments, yeah. so, okay. Yeah. All right, well, that generally drives not interest. Not a great prognosis, and now there's some really good treatments out there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. We love we love hearing mm -hmm. that as patients, clearly. And you, Con? I think the review course we did was great, and I think one thing that struck me was is uh, prednisone dosing. I know it's a very old medicine, but the review course we talked about, it's really, I think we can go down faster so tapering, tapering prednisone pred faster. So prednisone okay. faster from high doses for, for systemic autoimmune rheumatic diseases. Uh, faster and still a high initial dose for organ involvement, yeah. but a faster taper was just as good as a slow taper. Yeah, so uh, I can tell you that will make patients very happy because, the, of course, it makes them feel great, but they do understand the double-edged mm -hmm. sword of prednisone, I think, yeah. today better than ever. So this whole notion of tapering and... And on that note, before we go to our audience for questions, I'm mean, going to uh, toss that, that theme over uh, to biologics. I know at the American College of Rheumatology, we've seen tapering studies now for a few years. Are you beginning to see some of that application in your own clinical yeah. practices? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Uh, really? Especially if the person's interested in it, we discuss the pros and cons. There's always a risk of flare, no matter if you're well controlled or not so well controlled. More so if you're not well controlled yeah. or not well controlled for a long time. But, yeah. but everything that's done like that has to be done very slowly and carefully with short-term follow-up. Right. That's the, the most important thing. It's always the patient's decision. That's of the, course. the important thing. But yeah. they should know that it's, it's an option. Okay. But they have to know the risks and benefits. Okay. But you know, patients were doing this before the studies came out. Yeah. Anyway. Of course they were. Yeah. You know, we do many yeah. things yeah. behind your back. Yeah. 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 Often, um, if you discuss it, then you do a pharma net search and say, you've already been doing it. You can, yeah, yeah. Just want to be okay. Yeah. 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 We can Which tell is a, yeah. in BC, we can tell, we can go online. Because of the data, the can see data. The data, yes. The BC pharmacare data, yeah. Just one click on the EMR. Yeah. But it's on the, yeah. To get you know, it's so much better, and I'm saying this to our friends and followers out there and to our members, it's so much better to talk to your team about it rather than do it secretly, mm -hmm. though maybe some, sometimes I think that people are doing it, patients might be scaling back uh, uh, on their own um, without the knowledge of their physician because perhaps they feel their physician isn't going to work with them. That's right. And I think there's kind of nothing worse than that, is, is being in that in that sort of situation. So um, the goal for patients is always to try to be transparent. And if you don't feel you can be, uh, have someone come into the consultation with you mm -hmm. yeah. to talk about something you feel is maybe a bit more difficult uh, topic. But I tell you what, um, patients are all over taking mm -hmm. less, right, if they can, yeah. safely, and uh, still maintaining really good disease control. So that's sort of cool. One well, point on that is that one thing I always emphasize to my patients is to talk about their treatments as medications rather than drugs. Yeah. You know, and that uh, gives so many uh, different connotations. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I actually, at ACE, when we write, uh, the only time we r use the word drugs is if we're paraphrasing um, from a Health Canada yes. uh, sort of material, yeah. but we really strongly prefer medications mm -hmm. as well. And most patients kind of refer to their drugs medications as meds. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it's our little cool shorthand <laughs> uh, for the things we're taking to feel as, as good as we can. Uh, we're going to turn to the audience and see if there are any burning questions, and then we'll throw you out and get you back to the posters. In the beginning, when you mentioned triage, what do you mean by that? Bullet triage. Yeah. So that's a process of uh, determining when a person should be seen, how urgently. So some conditions such as systemic vasculitis, uh, early uh, rheumatoid arthritis, those people need to see, be seen very urgently because tr uh, appropriate treatment can change the trajectory of the disease. So if there's a window of opportunity that we triage people, it's either A, B, C, or D, one, two, three, or four, to be seen in a week, tomorrow, one month, two months. And so triage is a, is a process of uh, uh, tiering, 
referrals. Yeah. And, and not dissimilar from what happens in the emergency room. Yeah. You know, if you've yes. got five people who arrive and uh, somebody has cut their femoral artery, you, you want to deal with it quickly yeah. mm -hmm. uh, versus someone who has, not that it's, you know, not bad, but if you have a broken hand, mm -hmm. you can wait, you can maybe receive some pain medication or, or ice or whatever, but the person with a femoral artery, like, blowing up is probably someone you want to deal with right now. I think a yeah. good doctor, you know a, a doctor is a good doctor if uh, she or he is triaging their patients. Mm. You know, it's just that one simple step that will be good for your patients. Yeah. It doesn't take long. Yeah. And do you see an all-inclusive clinic with physiotherapists, occupational therapists, nurse, and multiple rheumatologists in the future? Sounds like nirvana to me. <laughs> you know, there are lots of those happening in uh, in in BC, there are not lots. There are some good interdisciplinary. Some are trying their best. Some have added nurses. Some have added physiotherapists. Um, at the Mary Pack Arthritis Program, there is a combined intensive collaborative with all of those plus social work, uh, which is quite good. It's hugely important because we know depression, mm -hmm. often underreported and not talked about probably enough, is a big thing in in these diseases. Yeah. Right. One of the difficulties that with the vast size of our province to have that in various centers is difficult and uh, it's, so it's often in, in the bigger cities. That but through a that. telemedicine model perhaps NEMA some of that can can occur just can't occur in person perhaps yeah, right? Exactly. So yeah. I think it's underused telemedicine. Yeah. I think we could do a better job. And with the telemedicine we have today people are doing it from they don't have to come into the hospital to go in a small room they're doing it from their iPads, their telephones, yeah. their uh, personal computer, so they're from the privacy of their own home, so it's convenient for them. Yeah, and I think if you're already immunosuppressed, I have to tell you, I for one am not thrilled about walking through the hospital. Like, I kind of want to keep my suppressed <laughs> autoimmune system somewhere else. Um, so I think there's some great application. It obviously doesn't replace a personal visit with someone highly trained such as yourselves, but um, there are huge applications. Mm -hmm. Is it going on in other provinces? Like, telemedicine is not a it's not, it's not just BC. BC. Yeah, yeah. in Ontario they have a big program, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. Province, so. Okay. Okay. So no more questions for now, but please keep them coming. We can always get answers to you um, after the fact. Uh, don't forget this interview. Uh, w much to their dismay, perhaps will live on forever. But you'll look young forever. Okay. <laughs> Um, on our YouTube channel, uh, Arthritis Broadcast Network. So we thank you so much for tuning in um, to soak up the knowledge and the experience expertise of Drs. Shojanya, Khan, and Nima. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.